Hi, we are Vicky, Cleo and Antonio and we are trying to live a sustainable lifestyle while traveling the world in our self-converted camper van. In today's video we will share two years of experience and all our knowledge about water in a camper van. This means how much do we carry, how long does it last and where do we find it. Make sure to stay until the end of the video because we will share with you our hack how we will stay more independent on the road while wild camping almost all of the time. So we carry 45 liters in a big tank on the roof. We have 10 liters in the front of the car for drinking water and a 7 liter tank in the kitchen for cooking and washing dishes. Additionally, we have 8 liters in a pump shower and two tiny bottles of 1 liter each. Stainless steel. Seventy-five liters lasts us about one week. This is less than half of the day usage of water of a European citizen. Still, it's not a general recommendation. This is what we use. It also depends on if we're close to water and can wash the dishes inside a lake, for example, or if it's a cold or a hot day. On hot days, we all drink much more. If we can shower, um, or if we shower with a pump shower, if drink you have a lot. To water the plants. Oh yeah, we also have plants have that we dog, have to water. <laughs> totally individual how much water usage you have in the van, but this is how much we use. As already said, we are trying to keep the tanks always full and in most countries it's pretty easy to fill the water tanks. Because you never know if we will find a really cool camping spot where you want to stay for one week. Like this one. <laughs> this one. What we do most of the time is going to a fuel station because in most fuel stations there is a tap where you can just refill your water for free. Either for free or again pay a little bit of money but water is usually pretty cheap. Another way is to go to a dump station where motorhomes and also camper vans can um, yeah, dump their grey water tanks and there's most of the times also a place where you can refill your water tanks. And another thing is to do it in a private home. So whenever you're visiting family or friends or you're meeting new people in a country, you can like, or basically our first questions are like, hey, can we refill our water here? And can we have a shower? Yeah. <laughs> whenever you're in a town or in a village, you can check for public springs. Most of the time in the center, there is a possibility to fill your water. Or if not, you can always go to the beach and fill it up in the shower or in the taps that we used to have in there. Yeah, most beaches have a possibility to find some water. Uh, next option is natural springs. I think this is something that people forget on their way a lot. Um, it's the best water. Uh, mostly people in villages know where to find those springs, so just ask. If there's no one around to ask, there's an app. It's called Maps Me, um, and it's basically an offline map. And I use it a lot to find natural water springs. A little van life secret is to go to cemeteries because they used to have very often a tap outside where you can fill up the water and no one says anything. They can't. <laughs> Okay, back to Syria. <laughs> Another option is something that we don't recommend anyone to do, and it's to buy water and plastic canisters. On my solo trip back then in Europe, when I traveled Spain and Portugal, I had a huge problem with finding good water. Uh, most tap water had a bad chlorine taste, so that I didn't like to drink it. So there was this weird thing. Um, I had the beach clean up, and I cleaned up tons of plastic whenever I parked in the place. And then I went to the supermarket and I bought plastic canisters for water. Maybe you hear it yourself, it just doesn't fit together. Plastic became a huge problem in our society and because it's so easy accessible, people overuse plastic. Uh, especially here in Russia, we see this problem. Russia is a country that doesn't have a proper recycling system yet. Being aware of that, we tried to reduce our plastic waste, for, first of all, and 
do a little bit more than we can. So here's now what we have for this trip through Russia and Central Asia. We got ourselves a water filter. This is something, oh, I love it, it's <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> This gives us the option to save tons of plastic. We carry the water filter in a box on the roof, so it's totally invisible and we never have to worry about it. And it doesn't take much space either. So whenever we run out of water and we don't find a good quality water source, we use a water filter. Of course, whenever we have the option, we choose the last contaminated water source. In our case here, it's a little stream that goes into the big Volga river in Russia. The water filter has two parts, the ceramic filter, which filters the bacteria, and the carbon filter, which filters the chemical stuff and also the bad taste. So we can filter water from streams, rivers and lakes, but also tap water, which smells like chlorine or tastes bad. The water jack, the mobile filter from Famous Water, is an all-in solution. You just have to plug it to the electricity and you're ready to go. Uh, when we use the filter, it's important to not put the pump inside the muddy part of the water. This is clear because otherwise it will be stuck of dirt. Uh, so if we want to stay in one spot, we now can just run out of food, but definitely not out of water. We hope you liked our video about water in the van and you found some helpful tips for your van life experience. <laughs> So if you want to see more of us idiots, um, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell and see you in the next time. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs>